Paul, you're full of promises and you <laughs> haven't made good on, on your promise. Which promise? I was waiting for a dartboard. Oh. I was practicing yesterday. That turns out the construction has been slightly more complicated yes. than expected. I want the dartboard to have like a nice moving background. <laughs> so the driver had <laughs> to go it's today. I not going to be rigged. No, no, no. It's going to be perfect and it's yeah. going to be the right colors and everything. And uh, it's close. So give me yeah. another day. And that, of course, is going to be used for the stock pick. Stock selection. Stock, stock selection, <laughs> yes. Uh, fantastic. SAB results. Uh, it seems yes. that Europeans and guys in North America are not drinking as much as they were. You know, I don't like the booze business for investment purposes. You know, mm -hmm. drinking is uh, a bit dirty, really. You know, it's very bad for you, alcohol, don't you think? I, I completely agree. <laughs> I'm just, I'm smiling. <laughs> so, you know, Such I a mean... Such a social responsible <laughs> investor, Paul. You know, all sorts of terrible things happen to people when they drink too much, especially yeah. in countries like South Africa. So it's strongly correlated with all sorts of forms of disastrous behavior. In fact, I have it on good authority that most of the people who forgot to turn up for yesterday's local government elections were yeah. in fact drunk because they started drinking in the middle of the day and then they never got to the polls. Mm. So, you know, it makes sense that only, what, 50% of people showed up. So, no, no, no. So, let me see your thumb. Did you vote yesterday? Yes, oh, yes, yes. Oh, you did indeed. Fantastic. <laughs> and uh, what do you make of the, the elections? Well, I think I was it was... chatting to Hein Krug a little earlier, and yeah. he was saying that um, it could actually have an impact on the market going forward. I think so. You know, we forget that uh, global capital flows really determine the levels at which our markets trade. And I know that our market is this weird consolidation of local stocks and then these global players that trade here and elsewhere. But there's no question that investment flows into South Africa are a function of our credibility as an investment destination. And there's no question that running high profile, very successful elections that everybody takes very seriously and where the results are professionally mm -hmm. delivered and so on, that's part of being a uh, you know, credible nation. So I think the elections were fantastic. I think also the emergence of two strong parties is really the takeaway message for me. So you've seen significant gains for the Democratic Alliance in the urban areas. Mm. Those metros are not yet in, but I think that will be well received. You know, and the fact that everybody is coming around to the idea that the, you know, the legacy issues are not so much important and the race issues are less important. I know I'm like seeing really the positive side of all of these things, but for me, very positive election, very positive outcome. And so you should, I mean, when you see some of the troubles that other African countries have experienced over the past while during their elections, Absolutely. so you should be proud. Definitely, okay. Um, it's so tough today, what to focus on? A bleak manufacturing number, home sales down, um, leading Talking indicators yeah. dropping, and then the IPO, the LinkedIn IPO, which has rallied almost 100%, I mean, it was up, um, came in at $45 a share, uh, rallied to around $92. Friday, some of your friends were SMSing, uh, tweeting us here during the show, saying we were being crazy <laughs> about social yes. media valuations. Well. You know, if you were lucky enough to get a piece of the action, we might the just be, I mean, listing. my friends on Twitter might just be right, <laughs> given the fact that this could be a bubble. So it'll be interesting to see how th this plays. Yeah, look, LinkedIn is, forward. for me, the least attractive of all of the social yeah. media thing. I don't know if you maintain a profile on LinkedIn. I but do have a profile. I never use it, though. I yeah, but I mean, that's true of almost everyone you talk to. But remember, what's interesting about them is that they sell some of that database information to recruiters. So, you know, if you get a call from rival channels saying they want to hire you, well, you'll know that that in part is potentially coming from LinkedIn and people pay for that kind of access. So I think that is the one element. But I, I mean, I, I am slightly worried myself because that's a company now that has a $9 billion stock valuation and made $15 million last yeah. year. So it is a bit crazy. And you kind of hear people saying, but this is like last time. And then people say, no, it's not like last time. This is, you know, better than last time. I'm a bit anxious, but you know, for sure, if I, I was running offshore. Facebook you, or something. I know you invest offshore. Would yeah. you be buying LinkedIn? No, we like wouldn't that? be buying them now. And the way we go about things, we wouldn't be offered yeah. stock anyway. But it'll be like hen's teeth, you know. It'll be the mates and friends that get stock at. Okay, so if every person on the planet came up with $2,000, what would that amount to? Uh, what, US, uh, US, US federal US debt US. or something? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're so good. $14 trillion. <laughs> if every person on the planet had to come up with $2,000, no, I don't want to talk what, about that anymore. That is what uh, would then result in, in oh, the US debt being paid off, which I think is. And suppose you paid $1 per second on national debt. Yeah. It would take 32,000 years to cover $14 <laughs> trillion. <laughs> you know what, it's going to be and soon, And of course, soon. spending cuts is going to ensure that the national debt gets brought down. But then all of right? the taxes that they're going to collect soon, the, yeah. the, the deficit will totally evaporate. But you know, I want to talk IPOs. One more thing. I mean, yes. in the midst of all of this, we've missed out talking about the Glencore listing. Mm. So it priced at the lower end of its range. It's come on. It hasn't had the same pop as LinkedIn. 
but that's another big player now, South African connections. I think it's going to be interesting to see whether they don't pull off a merger with Xtrata. That would be quite fun. So in the commodity space, it's been very volatile, but you know, I think they succeeded in getting that one off. It's pretty good. No? Well, it seems that social media perhaps is slightly more in vogue than what commodities are. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, Much more in demand, I this suppose. one was a partial placement and it's yeah. come on and it's got a $59 billion valuation. So it's much bigger than LinkedIn, but it's making real money. But you know, now the question is what they can do and what they can deliver. Yeah, joke of the day. Got the some joke of the us. day has to be the story coming out of Zimbabwe where they're talking about how the US dollar is so unreliable, they think they must rather have a new currency system which is pegged to the gold or bullion reserves. Which leads me then to my joke of the day, mm -hmm. which is apparently the singer 50 Cent, you know, the rapper, is extremely popular in Zimbabwe, except what do you think they call him there? I don't know. 400 million dollars. <laughs> 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 That's brilliant, of course, inflation. But it, it's actually, it wasn't deflation um, for some time. So, so I, I mean, think they should stop moaning changed. about what the US dollar is like because, you know, that's now their reference, Curry. You know, they passed those banknotes through the washing machine many times in Zimbabwe. Yeah. 